Desiree Meyer has four kids and a husband in the Navy who's been deployed for nearly eight months. She knew life as a military spouse would have challenges, but she never imagined the biggest one would be feeding her kids. Today was not a good sale day. We just kind of have to get creative. Some days we have, um, you know, bread drives. That's right. To make ends meet, Desiree and thousands of other military families around the country rely on the kindness of strangers. At Dewey Elementary, the Feeding San Diego truck arrives every two weeks full of fruits and vegetables, where a team of volunteers quickly sets up a distribution line. Families arrive early. Nearly everyone here is military. So I wouldn't say check to check, but pretty darn close. If you sneeze hard, that's it. If a flat tire goes out, that's it. You see what I'm saying? So you don't have much, right? Got a little 100, 200 lingering, but it's literally, that's it. Tanya McMillan is the principal at Dewey Elementary. We are 80% military and 70% free and reduced lunch. So essentially what you're telling me is that members of our U.S. military are paid so poorly that their children qualify for free lunch and breakfast. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, pretty sad. I mean, would you tell people that little kids whose parents are on the front line for the rest of us, you know, serving, mm -hmm. go to bed hungry sometimes. It's shocking. Yeah. Yeah, go to bed hun hungry and lonely because their parents are gone <laughs> sometimes, you know. We ask these kids to carry a lot. Yeah. Yes, we certainly do. Dan Meyer is well aware of that. As a communications officer in the Navy, he makes $34,279 a year before taxes. That's just under the national poverty level for a family of six. The military does pay for their housing, a significant benefit, but they still can only make ends meet with help. Family struggling with food insecurity is something Vince Hall, CEO of Feeding San Diego, knows all too well. Last year, this food rescue group provided 26 million meals. Many of these families are the hardest working people I've ever met in my life. They're focused on skipping meals so that their kids have something to eat. Planning their groceries down to the very last snack and watching every penny. Some of those people are military families where the kids are hungry on a routine basis. Yeah, I take great pride in the work that we do here, but I take no pride in the fact that our country stations families in San Diego and doesn't pay them enough money to live in San Diego. And chances are, while the service member is deployed in a combat area wearing the uniform of our country, they are going to be worried that their family back home is living below the poverty level and doesn't have enough to eat. And it's not just San Diego. NBC News obtained records from the Department of Defense. They show that one in three children attending schools on military bases run by DOD are eligible for free and reduced lunch. A group working with military families to get them the help they say they need tells us the problem is widespread. We've identified that there are food pantries on or near almost every military base in this country. They're serving hundreds of military families each month. Something he says the military tries to keep as quiet as possible. I think for DOD this is a public relations issue. They would rather it just kind of went away or was dealt with quietly. We wanted to talk to the Department of Defense about all of this, but despite repeated requests, they told us no one was available for an interview. Instead, they sent us an email telling us that the problem is minimal, that military members are very well paid, that there is a subsidized grocery store on each base, and that families can avail themselves of the financial literacy training the military provides. The position of the Pentagon is that if you plan well enough, your husband is being paid a competitive wage and everybody should just be fine, that the two of you are not doing an adequate job planning. My husband and I have taken advantage of resources available to us. We have met with financial counselors provided by Fleet and Family Services. We have done that work. No matter how financially literate they are, uh, there's just so much stretching they can do. I think it is a national outrage. Congresswoman Susan Davis of San Diego and Senator Tammy Duckworth of Illinois, a former Army helicopter pilot, have joined forces, introducing legislation that would lift some military families higher above the poverty line. 
minimal problem, as the military says? It's not a minimal problem. Frankly, instead of ignoring it or diminishing it, we should be fixing it. We should say, if you come to the military, your kids are going to get good education, you're going to get good housing, and your kids are going to be fed. The military is an, it's an amazing place to work. I love the Army. So let's compensate our troops who defend us um, so that they can do their jobs without worrying about whether or not their yeah. kids have empty bellies. So the estimate in order to fund what you think is needed, it's somewhere between 20 and 30 million dollars. Yes. It's a drop in the bucket when you look at the entire DOD budget, which is in the 735 to 750 billion dollar range. Back in San Diego, after 212 days at sea, Desiree is about to welcome her sailors back home. At Dewey Elementary, the Meyer kids are about to get a big surprise. Daddy's home, two beautiful words, which for today, push away all the worries.